Previously, we covered how the VP42H window processor from Roland can be controlled by a quick bar from Skahoy. In this video, we'll be looking at its sibling, the XS42H. So this device is a matrix switcher and it has a section on um, the left side where you can adjust audio parameters, transition speed and so on. And then on the right side, it has a number of buttons where you select which input goes on the output. So it has four inputs and black and two outputs. Um, if you look at the product, you can see this is uh, HDMI inputs and HDMI outputs over there. It has a LAN input, USB probably for firmware upgrades, audio inputs over here and so forth. Now, um, this product can of course be controlled by Skahoy controllers and one of the options that we would propose would be the Quick Bar. We already looked at that for the VP42H. Another product that could be interesting is a Rackfly Uno. So Rackfly Uno is your 24 button powerful four-way button OLED display, one rack unit panel from Skahoy, which is just very super flexible. We use it a lot for router control. So most often you'll find people using it for ProBell uh, supporting routers or Kumo routers. Blackmagic routers and so forth. In this video, we'll use these two products along with the XS42H and show how this integration has been done. The main difference is that one of these panels, the, the Quick Bar, has only f um, one fourth of the buttons you find on the Rackfly Uno. So, how do we bring essentially everything and even a little bit more into the Quick Bar that you can also do on the Rackfly Uno? Let's get started. And we have the Quick Bar right here, which is now connected to the uh, XS. Um, uh, 42H uh, we have right here. So as you can see, it has button on the front, as I just said. So in a way, these two products next to each other doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But the whole point, of course, with the quick buy is that here you have a surface you can hand over to someone else, uh, bring it, it away from the device, because you may not want this in your meeting room with all the cables going to a local spot in the middle there, or in any production environment, you, you may just want to hand over a quick bar to some operator who should have access to a few uh, scenes and output management in this device. So if we're looking at the quick bar, um, you can see that we can select different scenes for the device. So when I press any of these buttons, you see we are transitioning to a different scene. You also see on the output from the device that it's now just black. And okay, I have to admit, I have only one input source, that's the camera, and then I have black, and those are the two things I'm changing between. So the device shows you what transition is happening. Now I'm going from scene four to scene one. That's what is shown in the displays. If I hold down the key on the lower edge, this is the four way button. I will now access scenes uh, six up to 10. So it's like a shift key in a sense, but it's more powerful than that because uh, this little graphic and uh, you can see that it, it tells us currently that if I press the upper edge, it is going to give me access to sources. So as I'm now pressing the upper edge, you can see output number one to, uh, sorry, output number one, and I can now select any source for output number one. So I select black. If I select two, and it turns out that two is not um, is, is not available, then it's gonna go back to uh, an available source, as you can see. So I'm now trying again to change sources that doesn't exist, and it jumps back to source number one. If I go up here, I now have access to output number two. Again, I could choose black, I could choose output number two, but since it doesn't exist, it will fall back to a previous source. So that's output selection. You can simply toggle forth and back between those by using the upper and lower edges of this key. We also put in a little bit extra, so that would be transition time. So the transition time is also handled on the front of the XS42H, but we can set it with the four-way button. So notice how I'm now increasing the transition time to one second. Uh, let's increase it to a little bit more than that, two seconds. So this is a four-way button for you, quite typical Skahoy style. We can adjust values up and down by the edges of the key. Super great. I go back to my scenes and I now transition to a different scene. You can see it will do this over two seconds, as expected from a transition time function, of course. Uh, to just quickly cover what is otherwise in here, we have a panel brightness, so I can turn down the panel brightness. You will enjoy being able to do that. Uh, I mean, this is an action you can assign to all Skahoy controllers. Whether we have done it or not, it has nothing to do with the XS42H. It's just something that you configure and add to the panel. So, But you can, of course, adjust panel brightness. I also uh, included the, um, um, what does it say, panel sleep. 
So panel sleep is essentially that it's, it's currently off, otherwise default means four hours. And then if it is at 10 seconds, the panel will go to sleep within 10 seconds. So this is cool that we have it in a you know, menu hidden somewhere that we can actually do that. So this is panel sleep mode, by the way. It is gonna do a little firework color LED animation and it is telling you in the displays that it is uh, currently in sleep mode. This is to save your OLED displays from burning, which will happen after years of use. So that basically extends the lifetime of Skyhawk controllers by um, yeah, many, many years, depending on how you're using it. And if it's on all the time, you probably want to have sleep mode uh, running. So we exit that and let's go back to the sources uh, here. So basically that's, that's the features we built into the quick bar. And now it remains to be seen, how could we do, um, how would we do that for a Rackfly Uno? Now we have changed the cable over from the quick bar to the Rackfly Duo and it has booted up and connected to the XS42H. What you see is we were able to basically break out all the functionality on individual buttons. So no need to have a menu selecting shift kind of key on the panel. We can select the scenes directly by these buttons and you see the same kind of animation is going on there. You also see the transition time is still two seconds as we set it with the quick bar. So let's just reduce that a little bit like that. So now it's one second. We can do quicker transition between the scenes, of course. We can select the outputs directly. Again, if I choose an output which is not available, it is going to fade out until it fades in again. We can select black, of course. We can do the same for the output number two. Same thing, direct access to those things. So that's the Rackfly Uno. If you want the one or the other, it's up to you. This is how Skahoy rolls. We want to give you access to all the form factors that you need. You can have it in a rack. You can have it in a tiny package like the Quick Bar. You could have it on any other panel. It could be a, a part of the actions for camera selector on a PDC Flyer, PDC Pro, PDC Extreme, and so on. You can combine, mix and match exactly as you want in terms of what you control and which of our devices you use to control it. Mm -hmm.